I've spoken with most of you already, um, but I'll take this opportunity to welcome each of you and thank you for being here. My name is Gordon Meyer, and I'm privileged and honored to be able to uh, share in these moments with you. It's so important that you gather. Nowadays, in so many contexts, people are not having any gathering whatsoever. And I think that's um, sad in many ways, that's tragic. So I wanna to say to each of you, thank you for being here to honor the life and the memory of Alfred Schmitz. I know you didn't call him Alfred, so the rest of the service I'll call him Al, as he was known to most of you. But as each of you reflects on his life, I trust you'll be able to thank God, and genuinely so, for the privilege and honor that you have had to have him in your life. And now is your opportunity to really focus in these next few moments on him, who he was. And I realize and understand, and especially for uh, Mary and Julie, uh, to lose both parents in such close proximity to each other is not an easy thing. It's a very difficult thing, in fact. And so I know that it's difficult to say goodbye to the ones that you've loved. But I trust that God will bring you comfort and strength uh, even in these moments. And I think of the words of Jesus when he said, come to me, all you who labor, all you who are heavy laden, those of you who are weary, those of you who are burdened and stressed out, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me Jesus said, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So as we begin this time together, I would ask you to join me please in prayer. Father, we come to you today grateful that you are God and that you've made the way open for us to come to you and pray. And we pray now acknowledging today that we need you, each one here in this room, needs your love, your comfort, and your strength. Death has come, and hearts are heavy. Lord, I'm thankful that the Bible says that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. So today I pray that you would bind up broken hearts and minister encouragement and help in these moments. I pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to share the obituary that I was given and that maybe some of you have already read. But Alfred Schmitz, age 94, nearly 95, just shy of his 95th birthday, died Wednesday, June 7th, 2023, at his residence. Born in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, to Max and Stella Schindel Schmitz, Alfred came to the area in 2000 from Wisconsin when he purchased a home and every year for five years was back and forth until he finally settled here permanently in 2005. A retired machinist, supervisor, he was a United States Army Korean War veteran. He was a member of the VFW Post 3282, DAV, HOG, Eagles, American Legion, UFAA. He was an outdoorsman and he liked camping, fishing and everything outdoors. I was watching the pictures prior to the service and I was uh, reminded how much he loved just being outside and enjoying nature. He was a devoted husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather that will be dearly missed by all who knew him and loved him. Survivors include his wife of 12 years and five months, Luana, two daughters, Mary, with her husband, Rick, of Mon Manitowoc, Wisconsin, and Julie Schmitz of Appleton as well. Two grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. I never personally had the opportunity to know Al, but just in 
reading and knowing some of the things that were included in the obituary, um, I found out a, a fair amount of his life. But I, it's always interesting to me when a person lives nearly 95 years and their entire life is reduced to nine lines on a page. And I think, you know, in many ways that's sad, it's tragic, because I think, wow, of all the things that a person has experienced in life, all of the high points, the achievements, the blessings, the victories, as well as the difficult times, the sad times, the sorrowful times, there's a lot included and involved in a life of nearly 95 years that these few words really don't do justice to. And I know that. Um, for you, Luana, for you, Mary and Julie, your dad was so much more than those few lines on a page. Uh, we come to the end of life and I think about myself, I think, wow, I wonder what somebody's going to write. I wonder what the nine lines about my life will be. Uh, I wonder what words will be said of uh, me. What words will be said of you? In Al's case, even though I didn't know him, I got a, a good window in his life because I was thinking about 1928. That's a long time ago. I don't think anybody here in this room was uh, there before 1928. But I found it interesting, I did a little research, and found it interesting to find out that in 1928, Disney had their first animation movie with sound. Never before 1928, the year that he was born. And I found that interesting. It was also the year that 3M uh, invented scotch tape. The year your dad was born, <laughs> scotch tape was invented. It was also the year that penicillin was discovered, 1928. Um, and then I thought about the fact that he was 11 years old when World War II started. And he lived his preteen years and all of his early teenage life during World War II. That obviously impacted him greatly because when he was 22, the Korean War started and he served in the first combat unit of the Korean War. And he received a Purple Heart Medal. That's the highest medal, the highest achievement that anybody can receive. It indicates great sacrifice, tremendous courage, wonderful bravery for this country, the country that he loved. And when I read through all of the list of military associations he was part of, he, it tells me he was not only a veteran, he was a proud veteran. He was a, a, a veteran that was not ashamed whatsoever to indicate. He was part of the veteran of foreign wars, part of the disabled veterans, part of the American Legion, which is the nation's largest wartime veteran service organization that's a great advocate of patriotism across the United States. And so today we remember him, we honor him for the man that he was and the way he served. And uh, I've heard several adjectives used to describe Al. Uh, active, he was a spitfire, he was uh, everybody's friend, he was active, active, active. And uh, he was obviously very social, especially back in the day. Um, I'm also impressed with the mission statement I looked up online after I realized that he was part of the United Filipino American Association. I looked online to see what their mission statement was. And it, it's rather impressive to glorify God by empowering Filipino Americans through charity, missions, philanthropy, and helping the needy. So that tells me even more about Al's heart. He loved his country and proudly served. He loved other people 
and wanted to serve them. He loved his family and he loved this beautiful world being a true outdoorsman. So today we celebrate his life and it's proper that we take time to celebrate the loss. The Bible says that to everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There is a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to harvest what is planted. There's a time to break down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep. There's also a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time for war and a time for peace. This, today, this afternoon, we're taking time for reflection and mourning. One of the Beatitudes that Jesus taught says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's proper to mourn the loss of the one that you knew and loved. Isn't it interesting that the most common phrase that we use whenever we come to a visitation or a memorial service or a celebration of life, isn't it interesting that the most common phrase that we use is, I'm sorry for your loss. And that's appropriate because the loss is immense. The loss is immense. Uh, there's the loss of affection, the loss of presence, the loss of fellowship, the loss of companionship. And my prayer for each of you today is that in this loss, you will allow the Lord to heal your hearts. I want to share the 23rd Psalm, which is so often used at a celebration of life, at a memorial service. I love the 23rd Psalm. Many people love it. And I'm going to read it, and then I'll just briefly comment on some of the things that are in that psalm, which will indicate why it is, in fact, so special. David says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet streams. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's interesting to me that the, this particular psalm was written obviously several thousand years ago, and yet we read it today, centuries later, and we find comfort, we find hope, we find help, and the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. Most of you know perhaps that the author of this psalm was none other than David. He was a shepherd boy. He was very familiar with an agrarian culture. Uh, he spent many nights out on the hillside tending sheep and he knew what they needed and he worked hard to fulfill all of the functions of a shepherd. Uh, many farmers name their animals. It doesn't matter what kind of animal they are. Many name them. I assume that perhaps David named his sheep. It's interesting to me that the Bible calls all of us sheep, and it says that Jesus knows each of our names, and he calls us by name. We're not just a number. We're not just one of the crowd. And even though there are eight billion people on this planet. God knew 
Al Schmidt's name. He had a name, and God knew him throughout his life. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He realized that he, even though he was a physical shepherd, he needed a shepherd in his life. And the, the functions of a shepherd are to protect the flock, to feed the flock, to make sure they're properly cared for. Now, hundreds of years later, most of us in this room have never served as a shepherd, but the reality remains, we need a shepherd. <laughs> I need a shepherd, someone that will care for me, feed me, take care of me, protect me, help me. And so when I think of David saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I think that's that's pretty powerful. That's pretty amazing because I've got friends, I've got family, and they take care of me. But wow, to have the Lord, God himself, to be my shepherd, the one who cares and feeds and leads me. That's an amazing thing. The New Testament calls Jesus the good shepherd. It also refers to Jesus as the great shepherd of the sheep who gave his life by laying down his life in sacrifice for us. The next line says that he makes us to lie down in green pastures. And there are times in all of our lives that we're stressed out. The burdens are great. We don't know what to do next and we need to lie down. And I love the picture of green pastures. I have a feeling that Al would love the image of green pastures. He was an outdoorsman, but I picture the rest that comes when we lie down in a lush, soft field of green and smell fresh air and just relax. That brings comfort. But then David says he not only lies down, but he's led beside quiet streams. Water is so relaxing. Why are so many people in Florida? Because they want to be near the water. Uh, people build their houses on the beach, next to a river, on a lake, beside a pond. Over 50% of the world's population lives on or near the water. Why? Because it's relaxing. When the Lord is our shepherd, he makes us lie down, stop and rest, and he provides that quiet stream for us in the middle of all of the chaos of the noise and the distractions of the world. And in the process, the next line, he restores our soul. What kind of people need to have their soul restored? People who are broken people who are messed up, people who are uh, stressed out and fractured. The truth is we've all been hurt. We've all been damaged. We've been torn apart. And every one of us needs restoration. We need to be restored. And only God can do that for us because God created us in the first place. So when our lives fall apart and we realize we're down and depressed, and virtually helpless and hopeless. He can come and restore us. How grateful I am that when my life was broken and my life was shattered, he came and restored my life. Next slide, David says, he leads me. So often we're looking for direction. What should I do? I don't know what decision to make. What car should I buy? Where should I live? What should I do next? He leads me, David says. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He leads me down the right path. So when we're confused and we need direction, we don't know which direction to turn, God can lead us down the right path. And the next phrase, which causes us to use the 23rd Psalm, I think, at the time of a celebration of life. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It's interesting to me, 
He walks through the valley. He doesn't just come to the valley and stop. David says, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and he's not afraid. Why? Because the Lord is with him. Death comes to all of us. I'm sure Al was looking forward to his 95th birthday and beyond. We don't know. We don't have any guarantees. Death is no respecter of persons. It was Benjamin Franklin years ago that said that the only two things in life that are um, not uh, able to avoid are death and taxes, and it's true. We've all experienced that. We've experienced the loss of people close to us. We don't like it, but death is inevitable. But if Christ is our Savior, if God is our shepherd, we don't need to fear death. Death is not the end, it's only the beginning because you go through death, through the valley, into eternity. And that's why he could say he had walked through the valley. Death doesn't have to be something that's feared when the Lord is your shepherd. Why? Because he is with us. He's the one who created us. He's the one who knows us by name, the one who knows us completely, and he is with us always, even in death. You know, God knew the day that Al was conceived. He knew the day that he was born. He knew every day of his life. He knew when he left for the Korean War. He knew the day that he lost his first wife. He knew the day when Luana and he would be married. He knew the day that Mary and Julie would be born. God knows everything about us. And so we can take comfort in the fact that the last line of the Psalm says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever is an interesting word, you know. Uh, do you know what forever means? Forever means forever and ever and ever. There is no end. There is no limit. I'm so thankful that for those that have faith, for those that know that there is a God, a God who loves them and cares for them, that we can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Don't be upset, don't be anxious. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus said. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you can be also. Now, there was one of the disciples that was there when Jesus was talking about going to prepare a place. His name was Thomas. Uh, we know him as Doubting Thomas. But he said, Jesus, I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to leave. You're going to prepare a place for us. And you're telling us not to be anxious. He said, we don't even know where you're going. And if we did know where you're going, how would we get there? Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. In another place, he said, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. That's quite a promise. That's quite an assurance. I will close these remarks with the words of amazing grace. We've all heard it many times, but the words are powerful. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far. 
and grace will lead me home. And when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The truth is that God has loved each of us and has extended amazing grace to each of us. His arms are outstretched to me, to you, to each one in this room today. And his mercy is free, freely given. All we have to do is receive it. I would like us to pray the Lord's Prayer together, and then I'll have a final prayer. Will you bow with me, please? Let's pray the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, this life is filled with trouble and sorrow, with difficulties and challenges, But I am thankful this morning that you have extended to each of us amazing grace through many dangers, toils, and snares you've brought us. Would you now support Luana as she mourns the loss of her husband? Would you surround Mary and Rick and Julie and each of the grandchildren and great-grandchildren Lord, each one grieves in a very different way. There's no right way, no proper way to grieve. You've given us emotions. You've given us tears. Tears are a gift from you. And I pray today that you would help each one to know that you're the good shepherd. You're the great shepherd who will continue to lead them through their individual lives. Lord, Mary and Julie have lost their mother, and now they've lost their father. I pray that you would bring comfort, grace, and peace to each of their hearts. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please rise for the playing of Jack. Well, no camera. United States, the United States Army, and a great foundation. Please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation, for your love, honor, and faithful service. This is now the time when we bid farewell and say our final goodbyes to Alfred Schmidt. The Bible says before the mountains were born or before the earth was created, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying return to dust, O sons of men. You sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning, though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. As for man, his days are like grass. Life at best, even at nearly 95, is short. We brought nothing into this world, and we can care nothing out. So those of us who are still here must carry on with the memories of the ones we loved. I share this reading with you as if it were from the mouth of Al himself. Don't cry for me now that I have died, for I'm still here. I'm by your side. My body's gone, but I am here. Please don't shed another tear. I am still here. I am all around. 
Only my remains will lie in the ground. I am the sun bringing you light. I am the star shining so bright. I am the rain refreshing the earth. I am the bird upon the sky. I am the thoughts inside your head. And as long as I'm there in your head, I can't be dead. God knows the thoughts in your head, each of your heads this, this afternoon. And he wants to keep those memories alive. So now we come to the time when we commit to the earth all that remains of the one you love. Earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. We commit the remains of Alfred Schmitz to his final resting place. His spirit we leave with God. For God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Will you pray with me? Father, this afternoon, I pray for your comfort and your peace to watch over each one today. May they, they know that you love them with an everlasting love. And Bill, will, you will be with them in the coming days, even as they continue to grieve. Give them strength and courage to face the future. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Mary, God bless you. Julie.